Imagine you're strolling down the street when a tiny puppy suddenly catches your eye. Its fluffy tail wags with so much excitement that you can't help but feel a surge of happiness as it clumsily bounces towards you. Your heart instantly melts. But then, later on, you spot a baby in a stroller. You expect to feel the same kind of warmth, but surprisingly, you don't. No fuzzy feelings, no urge to gush over it. You start to wonder, is something wrong with me? Why don't I find babies as cute as puppies? If you've ever had these thoughts, rest assured you're not alone. And no, you're not crazy. While many people are naturally drawn to babies, and for good reason, there's just something about puppies that almost everyone finds irresistible. But why is this the case? What makes puppies so captivating, sometimes even more so than human babies? Scientists have asked the same questions and have dug deep to find some answers. In this video, we'll explore why puppies often capture our hearts more than babies. We'll dive into the science of cuteness, uncover why our brains react the way they do, and reveal how this plays out in everyday life. Whether you're a dog lover, a parent, or just curious about why those furry faces are so irresistible, this video will offer a fresh perspective on the psychology of cuteness. First, let's talk about what makes something cute research shows that our attraction to cuteness isn't just about aesthetics, it's actually tied to human survival. Humans are born much less developed compared to many other animals. Take horses, for example. Their foals can walk within 90 minutes of birth. Human children, on the other hand, spend their first few years mastering the art of wobbling, falling, and generally looking like tiny, drunken sailors. Because of this early stage of development, human infants require extensive care, making it vital for them to appear cute so that they can attract the attention they need to survive. Studies have even shown that our brains react very differently when we see a baby's face compared to an adult's. When you look at an adult, your brain processes the face in a straightforward manner, starting with the eyes and moving to the back of the brain, where facial recognition occurs. It's efficient, but nothing extraordinary. However, when you see a baby's face, it's a whole different story. An entirely separate part of your brain lights up, one that's responsible for emotions and pleasure. This creates a kind of neurological double-take, making babies particularly noticeable and triggering a powerful, almost instinctive urge to care for them. This dual brain response is why babies capture our attention almost instantly, often before we even know what's happening. Just a glimpse of those big eyes and chubby cheeks, and our brains kick into high gear, signaling that this tiny human needs our attention and care. Scientists have even devised methods to quantify this cuteness factor, examining key facial features like a large forehead, rounded cheeks, and those impossibly big eyes. Interestingly, as we age, these features gradually change, causing our cuteness meter to drop. The older we get, the less likely our faces are to elicit that same automatic response, which might explain why grown-ups don't get quite the same adoring reactions as babies. But what about puppies? Why do so many people find them even cuter than human babies? To get to the bottom of this, Jessica Galmirik, an associate professor at Indiana University, conducted a study to understand why people love watching dog and cat videos. She found that these videos do more than just entertain. They significantly boost viewers' moods. After watching these adorable animals, people reported feeling more hopeful, happy, and content while also experiencing less anxiety, irritation, sadness, and guilt. They even felt more energized. This mood-boosting effect is so powerful that even pharmaceutical companies have taken notice. When it comes to dogs, just looking at them, especially if it's your own furry friend, can light up the emotional and reward centers of your brain like a Christmas tree. But it doesn't stop there. Petting a dog cranks things up a notch, reducing stress hormones like cortisol while boosting the feel-good chemicals dopamine and oxytocin, which are key players in pleasure and bonding. And here's the cool part. It's not just you who benefits from this interaction. Dogs also get a nice spike in oxytocin when they gaze lovingly into their owner's eyes, creating a mutual cycle of affection. It seems pretty obvious, right? Spending time with animals makes us happier. But did you know that interacting with dogs can actually improve your work performance? Research has shown that after looking at pictures of puppies, people tend to perform better on tasks that require careful thinking and hand-eye coordination, making fewer mistakes. And here's another fun fact. When it comes to the cuteness scale, puppies and kittens generally outrank human babies for most people. Dog lovers will be happy to know that puppies are rated slightly cuter than kittens, and even adult dogs often score higher than babies in the cuteness contest. You might wonder why humans have evolved to find baby animals even cuter than our own offspring. A big part of the answer lies in the role we've played in shaping the evolution of domestic dogs. Through selective breeding, we've gradually altered their appearances over generations, favoring traits like big eyes and floppy ears that closely resemble those of human babies. 
Our brains may instinctively mistake these features for those of a human infant, triggering that deep-rooted urge to protect and care for them, often before we even realize they're not human. This response to cuteness isn't just beneficial for us. It's a huge survival advantage for the animals as well. Interestingly, animals don't intentionally use their cuteness to manipulate us. It's just how our brains are wired to respond. This wiring extends beyond animals, too. Even fictional characters have been designed to exploit our love for all things cute. Look at Mickey Mouse or Teddy Bears. Over the years, they've been given more baby-like features, making them increasingly endearing to us. And as one journalist humorously noted, there are plenty of reasons people might prefer puppies over babies. For starters, the sound of a puppy's yapping is a lot easier on the ears than a baby's wail. When a puppy stares at you, it's adorable, unlike the sometimes unsettling gaze of a baby. Plus, puppies are snugly and relatively clean, while babies come with the not-so-charming baggage of diapers and spit-ups. And let's not forget that puppies, with their small but noticeable streak of independence, don't require the round-the-clock attention that tiny, helpless human babies do. Interestingly, it's not just adults who are drawn to the cuteness of puppies over human babies. Children seem to share this preference too. Research suggests that even at a young age, children naturally gravitate towards the faces of puppies, kittens, and other baby animals. A study conducted by researchers at the University of Lincoln explored this further, examining how children's bonds with animals are influenced by their baby-like features and how these preferences evolve as they age. To dive deeper into this phenomenon, the researchers used eye-tracking technology to observe how children aged 3 to 6 responded to various faces. Instead of merely noting the kids' reactions, they measured exactly where the children were looking and for how long. The researchers also asked the children to rate the cuteness of different faces they were shown. To create a spectrum of cuteness, the researchers digitally enhanced some images to amplify features commonly associated with cuteness, such as large eyes and button noses. At the same time, they made other images less appealing by giving them more adult-like features, like a lower forehead and smaller eyes. When these side-by-side -side comparisons were presented, the results were clear. Children overwhelmingly preferred the cuter, more juvenile-looking images. Even at just three years old, kids were strongly drawn to the adorable faces of puppies and kittens. The study also revealed that adult dogs were significantly more appealing to the children, with cats following closely behind. Human faces, however, were less favored. What's particularly interesting is that the children spent 78% of their viewing time focusing on specific facial features like the eyes, nose, and mouth, traits that are key to defining cuteness. This concentrated attention suggests that even at a young age, our brains are wired to respond to these features, which likely play a crucial role in how we form emotional connections. The preference for animals with exaggerated juvenile traits, such as large eyes, highlights how these features trigger deep-seated instincts for care and affection, not just in infancy, but throughout our lives. The researchers proposed that this attraction to cuteness, which plays a role in adults' willingness to care for babies, might extend to how humans bond with pets. This could mean that a pet's level of cuteness influences the care and attention they receive from their owners. The study opens the door for further research, particularly into whether an animal's cuteness affects its likelihood of being adopted from shelters, which could have important implications for improving adoption rates. However, there's a surprising flip side to this fascination with cuteness. A phenomenon known as cuteness aggression, yes, it's a real psychological term. Have you ever found a baby so irresistibly adorable that you wanted to pinch its cheeks just a bit too hard? Or seen a puppy so cute that you had the urge to squeeze it tightly? This odd impulse where cuteness elicits an aggressive response has been examined by scientists. The theory suggests that when our brains are overwhelmed by feelings of cuteness, the emotional and reward centers become so overstimulated that they introduce opposing feelings to create balance. Imagine being so overwhelmed by a baby's cuteness that it actually hampers your ability to care for it. To balance out this intense reaction, your brain might introduce a hint of aggression, tempering those overwhelming positive feelings. It's a bizarre but natural response, helping to ensure that we're not too distracted by cuteness to function properly. In the end, whether you find puppies cuter than babies or vice versa, it's clear that our brains are wired in fascinating ways when it comes to cuteness. This instinctive attraction has deep roots in our survival and bonding mechanisms, influencing how we respond to the world around us. So the next time you catch yourself cooing over a puppy or melting at the sight of a baby, just remember that it's all in your head, literally. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more insights into the quirky and curious aspects of human behavior. Drop a comment below and let us know if you are team puppy or team baby. 
And as always, hit that notification bell so you never miss an update. Thanks for watching.